Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the 420 podcast of This Week at Bungie. <laughs> now, cringe aside, uh, they start off with our usual what was on last week's. So we had the specific third-party peripheral usage stuff, basically them clarifying what third-party uses would be violations of issues and such. Then dress-up accommodations, trials labs reminder, and then Bungie Foundations. And then this week, we talk about highlights of the mid-season patch. Highlights of our recent accessibility options article, which if you are expecting from me, I'm going to talk about the TLDRs there. Community exotic uh, votes, the next community vote, and the next week of Iron Banner in Season 20, and then the usual weekly stuff. So, uh, let's see. Some changes to introduce in the last update. So, for Crucible, removing Clash from Quick Play and splitting rotators into two nodes of Clash slash Zone Control, Control slash Drift in one, and then Mayhem, Scorch, Momentum Control, and Control in the other. Oh. And then we also have Core Rotator, which is Class slash Zone Control slash Rift, rebranded as Relentless. Uh, okay. And then they increase the respawn over shield protection in PvP, introduce the Seasonal Ascendant Emblem, and a stat track to display your current comp division, as well as Crucible and Gambit titles and Gilding are being fixed at reset. Trials of Osiris Commendations will be blocked if you do not get other Trials rewards. Er, uh, hmm. Okay. Then for the Vanguard Ops, tune difficulty in the highest battlegrounds present in the Vanguard and Nightfall playlist. Defeating Tormentors now provides revive tokens and GMs like Champions and Hive Guardians do. For weapon balances, 25% damage buff against red bars for auto rifles. Pulse rifles, hand cannons, and sidearms got 20%, and scout rifles got 10. And including other important changes, they added the capability to upgrade Root of Nightmares Adept weapons with enhanced traits. You can once again collect exotic glaive patterns from the evidence board. Added a commendation and stat tracker for the best dress commendation. Now, what is new in accessibility, colorblind changes, full auto mayhem, and more? Now, they basically added some radical changes, full auto melee changes, toggle settings edition, subtitle color choice, and as well as a peek of new commendations if you have a variety of colorblindness. If you want the full article there, there is stuff. So if you're interested in any of those topics, go ahead and read the article yourself. Catch up on it. Then we have the Community Voided Ornament coming to Destiny with the launch of Season 21. Of course, everyone voted for an Arbalist Ornament, so now we have a Neobuna Arbalist Ornament. It looks just like Arbalist, but a slightly different color. This is what the community gets when they vote for the same thing to get an orb in it over and over and over again. Then, going next way, we have the um, next community votes now. Between the weapons, we have Izanagi's Burden, Wither Horde, and Thunderlord. Oh boy, I wonder what's gonna win. Probably a thing that everyone uses. Oh boy. But, you know, Bungie, if you want to make cool ornaments for things that are gonna be unique, stop giving us the options of things, because I guarantee it's not gonna be Thunderlord. It's either gonna be Izanagi's Burden or Wither Horde just because people want a new ornament for it, even though all of these have already gotten more than three ornaments. I'd rather have something for something that doesn't have an ornament at all please. But then, if you want to look at full process, starting today, the community vote goes through an email on which exotic to pick. The community artist creates three ornament concepts for the said winning weapon, and then the community will vote on the favorite version of said weapon, and the winning ornament will be production and released in-game sometime in the future. So, there you go. If you want any of these three, vote for them, spam the accounts, whatever, just... I, I plead anyone who watches this, don't pick Weather Horde. The Wither Horde has already gotten so many more ornaments than everything. I'd, I'd rather have Thunderlord, just because it's the one thing that, while it does have a lot of ornaments, it's mainly because it's all the same. I would rather have something for Thunderlord than any of these other things. Then, Iron Banner. For anyone who hasn't gilded the Iron Banner seal, next week is your last chance during this season. So, there you go. Get to Iron Banner and rank it up if you so wish. Now, in terms of known issues and everything, with the weapon crafting notice, when you select a weapon to reshape, we copy that weapon that is in your inventory and place this copy in this reshaping slot. If you make changes to the weapon in your inventory after you have selected the weapon to reshape, these changes will not get automatically updated to the item in the reshape slot. This creates the opportunity to lose those changes once reshaping has completed. Until we're able to release a fix, players should avoid increasing a weapon's enhancement tiers while actively modifying that weapon at the Relic on Mars. If a player increases the tier and commits reshape, the new tier will be lost. To avoid this, players can enhance and reselect the weapon for modification to maintain the enhancement tier. Now, there's an audio issue workaround uh, currently investigating an issue with using the 3D audio and experiencing less than ideal sounds and speech. Using this issue can be resolved 
Recommends that players disable 3D audio such as native 3D audio on PlayStation 5, Atmos, Windows, Sonic on PC and Xbox. Now, any resolved issues missed in the last update? First of all, fix an issue with the terminal overload chest could be looted multiple times uh, for rewards and craft weapon progress. So don't bother going in and out, you can only get one drop. Crafting progress now comes from the key chest and not the base chest. So if you open the key chest, you will get more progress for crafting stuff. When the mod ashes the assets and hands on are equipped at the same time, players will only receive super energy from one of said mods when killing an enemy with the grapple melee. When these mods are equipped individually, each will work with the grapple melee. Basically, there's going to be a lot of nerfs to grapple strain hunter. Grenade kickstart will no longer activate when using a grapple point. When mods fire power and heady handed and equipped at the same time, only one orb will spawn when killing an enemy with a grapple melee. With these mods are equipped individually, each will work with the grapple melee. Reduce super gains from ash to assets by 50% when generating a grapple melee kill after using a grapple point. Basically, you can't grapple melee off of a refund point constantly. Players no longer need to have the strand subclass equipped to gain unraveling rounds on their strand weapons from the allied unraveling perk. Weapons will more consistently gain increased ammo capacity from multiple reserve mods. This is not applied to rocket launchers, grenade launchers, heavy glaives, Leviathan's Breath, or 1000 Voices since their maximum ammo capacity is reached by equipping fewer mods. So if, in case you don't notice it, if you have 9 rockets and go for the third, you'll probably stay at 9. Fix an issue where the fighting line grenade launcher was incorrectly benefiting from the void holster mod. Fix an issue where harsh language grenade launcher now correctly activates void artifact perks. And full damage is now uh, non-lethal to players. Previously, only collision damage was non-lethal. So, be thrown at any walls and jump off of any cliffs you want. You will not die in-game, specifically. Don't actually do that. Then, for known issues, players who previously acquired the Brazen Spark ship are blocked from completing the last one in Testament quest. Shaw Han dialogue is cut off if a public event is triggered, preventing players from hearing any remaining lines. No one cares about Shaw Han. Volatile Flow does not activate consistently. The Cheerful Destruction Charm does not grant bonus progress for guardian kills. The Insight Terminus Strike can produce bird errors when fighting the boss and capturing plates. Audio may disappear or may appear distorted in certain areas. Check the Audio Issue Workaround section above for guidance. The Guardian Game Statue was incorrect. Class displayed as the winner for the 2022 event. Some Guardian Games trials are activating early than intended. As a result, the titles tab now flashes as though something is unlocked. These triumphs will be able to be claimed when Guardian Games launches in two weeks. The Zone Control playlist does not display an increased Crucible Rank modifier. Dying in the Hypernet Current Strikes boss room can sometimes get a player's ghost stuck in the floor. Quitter penalties were erroneously up enabled with 7.0.5 for launch for completing matches that has since been corrected. Rewards are delayed upon creating certain raid encounters, with some rewards going to the Postmaster. Some players report that Radiant no longer stuns Barrier, and Fire Sprites no longer be generated from grenade kills. Also, Fire Power doesn't work at all, Bungie? Where's that? But, aside from that, uh, then we have the Movies and Arts of the Week. So, oh, that's a cool looking thing. And then, let's see, Arts of the Week, uh, Among Us, Among, <laughs> okay. And then, let's see, um, trial stuff, so irrelevant, but aside from that, that's pretty much the entire TWAB. So, some details, some adjustments, but mostly just news and everything. Boo that, boo these two. And that's just not being, that's not just me being a meta hipster. That's me being tired of seeing nothing but those guns. With that, my name is Mad Scorpion, and we'll see you in the next video.